Jalen, uh, after looking at video game two, what did you take away from that? And what did you take away from kind of the shots that you got after the first quarter when you went and finished one for 11? Um, I feel like I got a lot of good looks. Um, some didn't go down, um, but I feel like I got a lot of good looks. We looked at the tape, um, got some points of emphasis for next game, spacing, setting screens, um, et cetera, um, just to clear a little bit more space out. But I felt like I got some pretty good shots that didn't go in, but um, I'll be ready for game three. Jared in the right. Draymond did a lot of freelancing and uh, you may call it a lot of bluffing. After last, the last few series where you guys had to kind of figure out how they were trying to stop your drives, what did you see over these last few games and how do you pl plan to solve it? Um, same as, you know, coming to other series, Miami, the same thing, Milwaukee, did the same thing, trying to um, keep me from getting to the basket and, you know, keep those lanes kind of closed off. Um, and we just got to, you know, find ways to find space. You know, we got to set screens, you know, find ways to get open and then make quick decisions, stuff like that. So nothing we haven't seen before. Jay in the middle. We talked a lot last after the last game about the moment you had with Draymond, but they switched the matchup to put him on you. How did that tilt things for you? How did that change the opportunities you get? How do you guys need to attack that better in game three? Um, we just make adjustments. Um, just um, it put Draymond on me um, to clay off me. Um, it put him on, I guess, to just to be more physical, like in other series, other teams tried to do, just um, just be more physical and just try to um, make it hard for me to catch the ball or, or put me in tough spots to be successful. Um, so just negate that, um, set good screens, make some adjustments, and, and be ready for game three. Anthony, back left. Yeah, Clay is a pretty unique guy to cover. Um, what do you feel like you guys are doing well against him, and what's kind of the keys since you're, I guess, kind of the primary guy on him? I think he's just he's just missing shots. Um, we're going to continue to to make it tough for him, but that player, he can get it going at any moment, so we're aware of that. Um, and we're trying to you know, prepare ourselves to make sure that doesn't happen, but um, we got to do a better job, to be honest, not doing a good enough job on on, on Clay Thompson, he can get it going at, at any moment. Next question on the left. Jalen, when, when you guys have turnover problems in the playoffs, is there specific things that happen that cause it, or has it been different things, different times when that's been the case? Um, yeah, for the most part, it's usually the same thing, spacing. Um, we get on top of each other, or we don't um, have a we move with purposeful actions all the time. We kind of don't set screens the way we need to and kind of get jumbled up together which allows them to, to guard us a lot better or a lot easier than it should be. Um, so we just got to emphasize, you know, our spacing and, and, and be ready for, you know, what they do best and do what we do best. In the middle. Jalen, <clears throat> Emay talked a little bit about uh, how he addressed the, uh, the emotions of game two and how he would handle it, how you guys should handle it. What, what was his message in terms of awareness of Draymond's technical flagrant situation at any given moment? Um, don't get caught up in that. Just do what we do best. You know, we ain't got time for that. So, you know, just come out and play basketball and, you know, let everything else take care of itself. Like, I'm going to come out and do my job. Um, everybody needs to come out and do their job. We're here to play basketball. Um, so um, don't get caught up in, the, in all the, the antics um, and stuff like that. So just come out and play. Last question to David in the back. Jalen, I understand that this is the finals and it's about trying to win a championship. Uh, I just remember a couple of years ago in the bubble, the players led a lot of the discussion in terms of social justice and the various things leading to the Bucks not playing. And what I wondered is whether it's the gun violence that we've seen recently in the, in the country or some of the other things that are going on in the country at the moment, do you think it would ever rise to a moment where players or coaches or maybe both would say, we know it's the finals, but I can't play tonight. It could. I mean, you keep an open mind. You never know. Um, definitely things need to be addressed. Um, sometimes people argue and say that, you know, stopping a, a basketball game or something that what effect is that actually going to have on society? And I would say in response that it raises awareness. 
and that's important. It gets people's attention. It's a, it's a topic that's being talked about now, and now people need, certain people have pressure on them, and changes need to start to get made. Um, so I definitely think it's an effective strategy that could work. Um, do I have the answer if that something that we will see in the near future? I don't, but uh, we'll see.